everyone again and I'd like to introduce to you Dinah, our, one of our members uh, who is very passionate about um, history and in particular sawmilling. She's been doing a lot of work on the Tramio Mill, helping me out with signs and things and um, I love listening to Dinah because she's so passionate about her job and what she did and and I think that's just wonderful that, um, you know, she cared so much about the work that she did and saw how important it was to, to, to our community. So without further ado, Dana, I'll hand it over to you. And if anyone wants to um, add anything themselves, this is what it's all about. It's a sharing time. It's not just Dana. Yeah. It's, um, it's a sharing time. So if you've got things you want to talk about as well, please, please feel free to do so. Thank you. Well, this is my sawmill story. Whether it's what everyone expected, I don't know. <laughs> but it all started actually in England. I was brought up in the 50s in England and my grandfather, my father and two of my uncles worked in this sawmill in England. Um, Ghastly sawmill at Southfield. And that's the picture of it I took when I went back to England in, on a trip. Anyway, and sawmill in all starts was a tree. As you'll know, if we don't have trees, we can't have a sawmill. And trees, when you fall the tree, cut the tree, the timber is beautiful. It's all different. It's, and, that, and if you make something out of that, you can make anything from a matchstick to a cathedral. Mm -hmm. And if you care for it, it'll last for centuries. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sawmilling is an important part of our life. And, um, yeah, my dad, my granddad, two of my uncles worked in that mill until we came out to Australia in 1960. And um, my dad got a job on a farm at Brooklands and our vehicle and other belongings didn't come till six weeks after we were out here. We went to Brisbane and picked that up. And funny thing is, my dad stopped at Wilkinson's Mill on the way home from picking their vehicle up and asked for a job. And he didn't get one. They told him to go to the forestry and no, no jobs available, so we went off back to farming. And that was his idea of coming to Australia to see where he was born and to buy a farm, which he ended up doing, and the farm was at Barnarkin. And he ended up working for Alf Alry in the forestry, snigging timber out with draft horses as he had done in England and then when Alf retired gave it away he got a job at Tromeo Sawmill and we didn't know Tromeo Sawmill existed when he'd asked for those other jobs and if anyone wants to hear a gory story about Tromeo Mill with a happy ending in 1960 I can tell you one Okay, my husband's um, father and a couple of his uncles and his grandfather worked at Tromeo Sawn. They just set up the case mill that just moved it from the coup to Tromeo. And his grandfather, my husband's grandfather, was working the dock and saw, and the chain broke as he pulled the saw, and it cut him right up the middle. Now his son was working at Wilkinson's Mill at the time they contacted him. He apparently rang the doctor in Esk and said what had happened. The doctor in Esk said, I will bring him down to Stonehouse and we'll meet him down there. They met him down at Stonehouse, they worked on him, they put plastic tubing inside him got him going, sent him on down to Brisbane. That man lived till he was 93 oh, with no yeah. complaints. Wow. He went back to work at the same mill. How good is that? You know, how amazing. 
that was. Dino is Toromeo Mill near the power station. No, that's thinking. Oh, Toromeo thinking. Toromeo is on the top of the range. Oh, yeah. Mm. You turn left and go, and there's a big sawmill down there. That mill has been there since 1910 mm -hmm. and it always operated, still operating today, but probably not doing. Well, the output is probably as much as it is was back then, but um, the employment isn't as great because of all computerised ventures and whatever. <coughs> and yeah, they used to have a pit saw out at Tromeo, yet to find out whether that was there prior to the mill and how long that operated. Um, and I don't know where I am right now. Yeah, there was lots of sawmills around here. <laughs> lots of sawmills around here. There was Crompton's Mill, which cut hardwood, I do believe, Ken. Hardwood and some pine. Some pine. Major pine. Yeah. And Ogilvy's Mill, which cut hardwood, lots of it, and big stuff too, big heavy work. There used to be a sawmill across the road from the pub on Tromeo Creek mm -hmm. years before. I'm not sure who owned that or anything. Was that Griffins? And was it Griffins? Griffins owned the one at Bernard. Oh, okay. yeah. I'm not sure who owned that one. one. I thought it was no. um, Brett. Oh, could yeah, be yeah, because we've got photos mm -hmm. here that Mr Locke sent mm -hmm. many years ago and his father worked there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yet my husband remembers Griffin's Mill at Benark and mm -hmm. being over the fence from the school when he was going to school mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And Dinah, the sawmills also had done opposition. Um, <laughs> that there's two sawmills in Blackburn. I was in Ogilvy mm -hmm. and I was told don't go across the road and see what's <laughs> in that other sawmill. <laughs> <laughs> and I was very, very pissy. So off I went in my little tiny corduroy mini skirt and I attracted this man's eyes and I married the opposition. And I do have looking for a photo of Iris in her mini skirt. That's Nanango's Oh my mini skirt. Nanango sawmill in the thirties. Look how many people they employed. And there is a bit on Ogilvy's Mill there, and the big logs that they used to cut. In Ogilvy Sawmill up here, they used to buy Yarram State School with all their little pine boards and stuff for the oh, manual. manual arts. Mm -hmm. Manual arts. For many years. Yeah. So they've done some pine as well as hardwood. And you used yeah. to do a lot of flooring and all that sort of stuff. They dressed down and over with that thing. I used to love going with Dad. Um, but the, um, what do you call it? The, um, so the, the mill, the timber and the leftovers will go into a big wood heap. And one of Dad's jobs was to deliver to the local bakery the wood. Not long, yes. lengths long for yeah. the wood fired oven. Mm -hmm. So the bakery's still in the same place. I used to love going there because I could go there and there'd always be something yummy to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we moved to <coughs> Bernarkin in '67 and I started work at the Tromeo Sawmill. Um, the Jones's girls were there, the Rogers girls were there, they showed me the ropes. We were making fruit cases. Used to have to um, resaw boards and then dock them to length and then count these boards and tie them up in a bundle, stack them on a pallet. And um, the same with the ends. The end, every box was a different size. You had to know what timber went with what boxes. And they were all different sizes. And, uh, and the ends were thicker material, 
and sometimes you had to cleat them together. And the cleating machine was like a big standing up stapler and worked with a pedal. And you put the two boards in and you cleated it, turned it over and cleated it again. And then you used to have to tie them up in a bundle would tie them up with wire. Didn't you, Bill? Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> Bill would have done a lot of that. <laughs> and um, yeah, did all that. We made our own pallets. At first, we were using hammers and twisted nails, big long twisted nails, to make our pallets. And then some fruit cases required um, lids, which you had to staple together. And there is a picture in here of the lids that we used to make and the girls making the lids. Experienced girls, it says. We never passed that. You believe it, you were really good. <laughs> and um, yeah, those crate those fruit cases got sent <clears throat> all the way all over Queensland, near down to New South Wales. And we used to have to send some into the railway station and Daryl Morgenstein would take a couple of lads in, which Bill probably did at the same as well. And they'd have to unload them by hand off the truck and stack them into a railway wagon by hand because there was no forklift at the um, railway station and send them on down to Wynnum <coughs> where somebody unloaded them by hand down there and <laughs> took them away again to make the fruit boxes. Mm. And lo and behold, I went mm. to Bill Hull in Kingaroy one day for an accessory for my car and he asked, the guy in the service desk asked me what my address was and I told him Banark and I said, it's really Toromeo but nobody knows where that is. He said, I do. I said, oh? He said, yes, when I was about 12, my granddad took me to a big sawmill at Toromeo and we used to buy, my granddad was buying fruit cases off that mill and they were sent down to Wynnum by rail, and I used to help my granddad unload them off the train. Mm -hmm. How uncanny is that? Mm -hmm. And then he said, when I was about 20, my dad took me to Tromeo Mill, and we used to buy mouldings from that mill and resell them down at Wynnum. Mm -hmm. So that was all good. And um, yeah, there's a lot of hard work went into making those cases and those pallets. We used to have to make our own pallets to put the stuff on. And yeah, then that all went by the wayside because oh, they used to cut hardwood in the steam mill, which was closed down in 71. And I do have a photo there of my son sitting on the last big hardwood logs. And um, then um, they, uh, I've got ahead of myself again now. They, then, then the fire, the fire in the middle out there was in 78. <coughs> They stopped cutting hardwood in that mill in 71. And my dad was working there about 70, in that time, yes. And um, he was working the gantry in the mill, swinging a log in with the gantry that we're going to put up one day. At the Jesse's World Park. At Jesse's World Park. Park. Yeah. It's called Teamsters Park, but we call it Jesse's World. <laughs> and the conveyor belt broke and the cleats out of the conveyor belt went through the roof of the mill. Two went through the roof of the mill 
One went through my dad's arm, right there. <coughs> through. And um, anyway, they called the ambulance, and Dad said, "Just put a bandage on it." Like a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, no. So they called Mum. Mum said, just get in the ambulance and go. I've got the milking to do. <laughs> <laughs> and, yes. And once again, he was sent to Nanango Hospital and they packed that hole with um, lint. And he used to have to dip his arm in paraffin wax and then pull the wax away and keep doing that twice a day. And he never had a scar on that arm at all. Mm. Never had any problems. And once again, he went back to work at the mill and mm. happy as Larry. He didn't want to leave. The next day I went to see if he was okay, because they told him to put it in a sling. I guess he was okay. He was down the corn paddock chipping thistle <laughs> with his other arm. <laughs> so, yeah. But, um, yeah, and then when the cases went, they, because cardboard boxes took over, they started making um, bed bases. And we used to have to staple a strip of hashing, which I used to have, but I've probably used it all for tying up trees or whatever. <laughs> we used to, on every one, they and this is where Trevor Biggood and them came in handy because they'd have to make up a, a jig to set it in. So she just laid the boards out and stapled the hashing on. Used to roll them up and tie them up and send them away. And then they were doing bulk bins for fruit, bulk fruit. They did rough sawn ones and dress ones. Paul had to be doctor length. The dress ones were very hard to stack because they'd be slippery and they'd want to slide. Once again, they had to make up a jig to sit them in so they wouldn't slide away. And, um, yeah, so we did uh, heaps of battens, roof battens, cut them. And used to tie them up in bundles of nine, four metres long and whatever. And you had to add it up as you were tying, add up the length of the, the amount of timber that was in that bundle and write that on the end of them and tie them up and stack them. And we, um, I graded timber down there for about 20 years. Um, they grade white, red and blue. While I was there, they invented another one which was green, and then later on there was another one invented furniture grade, and it all depended on the knot spaces in the timber as to what grade it was, and that way you put it in a different stack, and when you stack that stack, you tied it up and took it away and started all over again. You would remember when it changed from Imperial to Metro as well. Yes, that, that was, was a big a, change. That was a big change, a big headache. And the yeah. only way I could handle it was just throw all the feet and inches out yeah. of my head yes. and bring in the metric. That was the only way I could do it. Mm. To try and convert didn't work. It doesn't work. And the chimneys on that mill out there were taken down in 78. They got rid of the steam in 77 and converted that mill to power. And the chimneys got took down in 85, sorry, because they started to sway in the wind and were getting too dangerous and whatever. So they did that. And then they built a, a dock and shed to dock um, export material for Japan. And we used a tiger stock to do the docking and stack that on a pallet. The pallets, once again, we used to have to make. They used to go into a container this time, so they were long, longer pallets than normal. And then you had to estimate what was 
how much material was on that pallet, which is pretty hard when you've got little gaps between it all and that. So I used to go around and measure the gaps and take that off, the amount of the pallet. <laughs> that worked. <laughs> And they built a big planer shed out at Tromeo for mouldings, which um, there's heaps and heaps of different mouldings. I've still got some off there that they used to cut both sides. And I've got a photo of the fire that took over the mill in Tromeo, if anyone wants to read that. And um, when Graham Young wanted to retire, he started putting some of the extra work on to me. I used to have to do a stock take of the sawmill yard. <laughs> <laughs> the logs, the timber, the timber in the shed. <laughs> yes. I, we got through that one, <laughs> and, and um, I used to have to do the paperwork for the, the lo truck loads that used to go out. And I was so glad when Graham did retire and Farron and Bruce took over because they um, did it all then. <laughs> Made my life a bit easier. But <laughs> Did you get equal pay? No. no. <laughs> you didn't get double pay. <laughs> oh. And um, yeah, we um, did lots of different things there. We used to, my husband and I used to work there on the weekend and we would dock Dunnage for Camalco extrusions down in Brisbane and dock a semi load in a week of all different lengths, different of a semi load in a weekend we'd do of all three V twos. Seventy five by fifty. <laughs> um, and we did Tiger Stock for a while and then they decided they'd buy a Greek on, didn't they, Debbie? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that was a challenge and a half. What's that, Donna? Have you put yeah. reflexes though? Mm. Yes. <laughs> What's a Greek on? A Greek on is an automated docking bench that will dock anything from that big to ever big you want. Mm. Okay but you have to program it to cut. You just put a, a chalk mark on the board where the knots are if you want to take the knots out or if you didn't have to take any knots out, leave the knots in, it would dock it to length automatically. Just no one was near the saw or anything, but if a bit of sawdust got in the wrong spot, that would cause havoc. So we'd have to shut it down and clean the sawdust right out with a vacuum cleaner <laughs> and start all over again. <laughs> and um, yeah, we supplied all of Queensland TAFE colleges with little components that they used to build in their TAFE, you know, if they were making um, a work box or a pencil case or something like that, you know, pencil box. Or I don't know what the half of them were. We were just told the lengths and the sizes to dock, and that's what we did. And that was like a jigsaw puzzle, trying to stack all these odds and ends on a pallet, because mm -hmm. some were long, some were short, and some were fat. Some were, mm. so, uh, and mullers were there for 50 years. Well, they had 50 years of sawmilling, but that included sawmill that was out there, so, and that's my invitation to their celebrations, and that's the family there, and, yeah, I don't know whether I've covered it all. We worked on the, the green chain for a while. Mm -hmm. 
which was a challenge, but we did Why is that. Why it called a green chain? A green chain, because the timber is green. It's mm. heavy. It's always it comes yeah. off the saws. Yeah, it comes straight off the saws mm. through the dip, which made it twice mm. as heavy. Twice as heavy, yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. And I worked a um, breakdown bench in the mill at one stage when Jackie wasn't there. I used to work Jackie's bench. I've put boards through a planer. I've used every dock and saw in the mill. Mm. Um, I've graded all their timber. Um, and when we made pallets for the stuff for Japan, we weren't using hammer and nails then, we were using a nail gun. They bought us a nail gun. <laughs> And um, yeah, we did uh, everything, and then things start. Oh, and that was another thing we did was big blocks of wood, 300 square and 900 long, stack them on a pallet, and more than one pallet, and they used to go up to Darwin to the Air Force up there to hold their planes down. Oh, it would be great if we went and had a look and see if they're yeah, still there. Yeah, you see that. <laughs> and they're that, from Toronto. They're from Toronto, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and you know, we cut little tiny things for the TAFE College and there's great big things that hold planes down. <laughs> the last thing that was cut in that steam mill um, before it got dismantled was um, somebody wanted a boat, a yacht. He was wanting material to, uh, and he wanted the all clear hoop line. Mm. had to be. And somebody wanted to make an airplane. They made an airplane and a boat. I don't have photos though. Bruce would have had photos. I know he could, but I so the guy actually did make it? He did make it, wow. and, and they did sail, and they did fly. Did you crash? So if you want a souvenir of Tramia Mill, you get in touch with the man who built the yacht. Mm. 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 Yeah, wouldn't it? <laughs> they, they put three sole kilns in down there to dry their timber as well, which the backup was gas, because mm. When you were wanting to try timber, it was usually cloudy, rainy weather, mm -hmm. and you never had the sun to work the solar panels, so you had to turn the gas on to work those. And Colin Rolf used to do most of that because you had to make sure it was baked before you brought it out, otherwise you'd be in trouble. And Colin Rolf used to work that out, but when Colin was away, it was up to Dinah. To <laughs> figure out whether that timber was ready to come out. And, and yes, um, my husband left the mill in 2003 and started up his own. And I left when the mill closed in 2004. And yeah, went to work for my husband then. And Oh, and that's another one there that my grandson sitting there on the last of the big pine that they cut in that mill. Um, there is a picture of the Greek on there. And my husband's starting his own mill. And then we bought a hundred acres out of Tromeo. And that's when I became a partner of his and we had our own sawmill. We used to cut our own timber. Um, we supplied, because the guy that was buying fruit bins off the mill couldn't get anyone else to cut his timber, so we cut all his fruit bins for him. We used to cut sleepers for Kilcoy timbers. And hardwood, if anyone wanted do an extension on the house or whatever, we had all the hard to get a big order for um, making council pegs at one time in the our mill. Mm. Um, you know, the survey pegs, the white mm. pegs they mm. put on the side mm. of the road. 
we had a big order for them and cut the points on the pegs as well. And oh my gosh, that was a lot of work. That's another thing we made was rulers. <laughs> Is that really a Tramia Mill one? Tramia Mill made in China, is it? Malus. Wow, isn't that wonderful? That was our our um, our I treasure that. It's got M S on it for Malus Sawmill. Let's oh, stand and. Um, wow. They were our pecs, middlemen, you know, the yeah. people yeah. used to work, yeah. and we used to work with strafers at the same time, wow. at the same time. Just pass it around and make sure it comes back. <laughs> and oh, when, you were, Henry. when you were grading oh, timber, the timbers would be stacked out in the paddock, oh, and they'd bring them into oh, the shed for you to take each board off, board by board. Sometimes you would find frogs, yeah. mice, <laughs> snakes, <laughs> but also implanted in the board sometimes there was a bullet because they used to shoot the seed pods down the tree and, and yeah there would be a bullet that had been sawn in half in the tree. I actually found a fir cone that was actually embedded in the tree, in the board as it came along. Wasn't I didn't saw that in half. That was in the middle of the board. How? Why? It got there. Don't know. And these, I don't know if you've seen them, they have a special name. I should have looked it up. Are like little growths, like little tumours. They grow between the bark. In the soft part of the bark, they sort of grow in the yes, and so forth. more or less where the branches come out. And they can get to an enormous size. Oh, and they're, they're not, like... They're not the bulls. They're no, bulls. they're not bulls. They're between the bark and the, the tree. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, that's about my sawmill story. And true Sora will tell you that they've got sawdust in their blood, <laughs> which I was born to because the people of that sawmill that lived in the manor house were my godparents. Oh, there you go. Well, I think your grandparents, the grand, you know, relations, would be very proud of you, Don. <laughs> of all that you've done. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for sharing. I think one half of me's got sawdust and the other half has got soil. Yeah, definitely. But that's another story. <laughs> Rightio, so you're all welcome just to stay and talk and have a look at some of the things that Dinah has presented. But I'm, I'm, I'd like you to show your appreciation to Dinah. She's obviously put a lot of work into it.